Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I've come down to see a good buddy of mine, David Fryers. If you're unfamiliar with David Fryers, he's renowned for making a custom modular bushcraft pouch system. And if you've been watching my channel for some time, you would have seen him in previous videos where we looked at a few backpacks and how his modular system fits into those packs. So in this particular visit, what I'm gonna do is gonna be looking at a particular Frost River style of pack. And hopefully if we get time, we will record either one or two other videos. If those videos are already out by the time you're watching this video, links will be down below in the description. So without further ado, hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Mr. David Fryers. How are we going? Doing well, buddy. How are you keeping? Really good, mate. So, what pack are we going to be looking at in this video? Right, this is the Frost River Boulder Pack. Now, this is a newish pack to me. I've had quite a few Frost River packs over the years, and uh, I really like their materials and the way they're made. Construction, great. I love it all. Some of the big packs are just too heavy, you know, and uh, I've made a few mistakes in the past of loading up with too much gear, too much canvas and too much stuff, you know what I mean? And, uh, but anyway, this is, a, this is sort of a day pack and, um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've been using the new sort of canvas material that I've got on the, on the shop um, and sort of fixing it in within this boulder pack and it works really well. There's some new products that I'm working on in now, um, but let's have a look here yeah, and see what we've got. Let's do this. Right, so being quite a thin pack, so it's quite thin and quite long. Um, like so, like certain of the pouches won't fit in it, like the large box pouch. You know, it would squeeze in there. It would, but you know, it's, we're not going to. It's a day pack, so we don't need to put um, too much uh, like warm stuff in there. Um, so it's yeah, it's a long pack. So first off, on each side. So on this side, this is a ground mat. Now. Um, if you know Ollie from Outhouse, this is one of his products he makes and it's a really nice canvas, good quality canvas, um, ground mat with a wall plate or sort of a wall, wall liner in it. Now if, if I can get this thing open, I can show you. So basically we roll it out. Oh nice. Really nice um, and he makes this in various different sizes, um, even does really large ones um, where you can put your roll mat inside it, like a little sleeve envelope type of thing. Um, but yeah, they're really nice and all sort of handmade in the UK and uh, a bit like myself, you know, just trying to make quality products. So uh, that's Outhouse, that's O U T H yeah. A U S. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so yeah, check him out. He makes, he's got swags, he, 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 um, tarps, canvas tarps he makes in the UK, um, and a lot of Petromax stuff. So uh, it's worth checking out. Right on the other side, I've got an axe. So I just sort of clip it over the sort of power cord they use, and so we've got an axe, and also. I just use a carabiner to hold that in place. A little pouch I've made, um, and yet again I'm using them plastic uh, tent pegs. Just it's really light, you know, and they're, and they're really, really strong. So that's from the top. In the front pocket, we've got, I think this is a 300 mil Trangier bottle, methylated spirits. Spoke and inside here, it's, it's like a, a, a possible kit, say. So, I've got a and this is an Enzo, uh, I can't remember the actual model of it, but it's a really good um, it's D2 with uh, carbon fibre scales. I've had it for years and it's really nice. And with the striker, you've got you know, as you've little fire kit there and uh, a little knife, good quality knife. Then we've got some matches and the old Vaseline and cotton ball. Works really well. I know it's one of the things that maybe people don't do as much nowadays, but it's still an easy fire starter to make with some matches. 
Um, and then in here is a, a little kit actually I made up in the summer. So there's another little fire striker. So we've got one there, that would go on your belt obviously. Um, but that's just one that stays in the kit. And it's a more traditional flint and steel setup. So we've got the flint there. There's no child cloth in there at the moment, but I must be used it, a bit of firelight in some fat wood. Um, and this was like an old tobacco type tin that I've got at one of the old uh, war reenactment shows. Yeah, it's quite a nice one. I've not it's seen that. Lovely, isn't it? And that, and yeah. that, and that uh, flint, uh, the steel fits in there perfect up there. So, and that fits nicely, which I already had this pouch anyway. You know, it's a nice little little kit that you can put in your belt. So there. Hang on, I might leave that there for a minute. And this is the, the, the wax canvas, which is a, what they call is the, it's a desert cat uh, wax. And that means how much wax is in the, in the canvas. And I don't like canvas, which is too sticky and too wet, you know, um, where this stuff's not. Um, it's, 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 uh, and it's quite a heavy gauged um, canvas as well. So that's a, that's a small, X small pouch. So in the main bucket, So a lot of this stuff in here, some of it I've been testing out because I'm making with canvas material and trying different drawstring bags and pouches to see how they work. And I like to test things, you know, it's not saying I'll just make one and just that's it. I like to use it and see if it actually does work. Uh, ground mat. Um, this is one of my uh, medium low pouches. Um, in there I've got a poncho and the cordage to make it into a tarp. And if people haven't seen the previous videos, uh, just want to quickly touch on this material. Yeah, so this is my um, nylon Cadora material, which is like a thousand D material. At the moment, I'm making it in the olive green. I did have brown, khaki brown, but I'm, I'm out of khaki brown at the moment. It's a bit hard to get hold of. But um, so this is like the, I do this pouch. This is the medium low uh, box pouch, and I do a, a smaller version. And it's really nice, slim. You know, it's got a poncho in there, um, and it just compresses that poncho and makes it that you can just chuck it inside your rucksack or take it to another rucksack or whatnot. And contrary to what people may think, and once again, assuming people haven't watched the previous video, is that's actually quite a lightweight material. Very lightweight, yeah. Yeah, I suppose something that that pouch mostly weighs about 45 grams or something like that. You know what I mean? It's very light. Another one of the pouches, and this is just a small flat pouch, and that's got cordage to the tarp, which I've got in there. I've been mucking around with little toggles uh, on the guide points. Something I've not really mucked around with, but you know, it's always good to give something a different, you know, a go. And the beauty of it is that if you need to change the configuration of the tarp, it's easy enough to just take the toggle off and move it to another guide point. And it's quite a chunky zip you use, don't you? Yeah, all chunky zips, all size eight zips. And uh, so I've not had a problem at all with them zips. They've been brilliant. Um, so zip pouches, this is the larger of the zip pouch, zip pouch and this is the canvas material. Now, I think the people who buy canvas are different than people who buy the nylon. You know, this is people who like, maybe they like the more sort of traditional looking rucksacks um, and um, style and it's got this more like rustic look to it um, and feel and as it gets older it sort of creases and gets that patina to it and it just looks really nice it's almost like the dirtier it gets the better it looks almost so um, so yeah this is a uh, uh, this is the large version of the zip pouch and uh, so this style is designed to stand up as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, to stand up, put your hands in, grab, that's just a brew kit. I've got too much, it's, it's too big actually, I could put, you know, a load of stuff in there. Um, and yeah, again, everything's functional. There's a reason why I'm webbing there. And it just sits there. And I just like use these pouches if you're just going to grab stuff on, you know, sort of constantly, you know, you want to grab out of there. Um, what else we got next? The old... Uh, Trangier pouch. Now I sell loads of these, and uh, so if you've got your little Trangier burner, um, yeah, again, you know they do get a bit sorted up, and um, just having a small little pouch for it um, just keeps it nice 
in one, in one place. They can be used for many things. I know someone who puts loads of little uh, torches in there, um, put a load of them fire starters, you know, the little fire um, uh, starter, I can't think what they're called now, uh, in there. Um, oh, you can put loads of things in there, but I'll just call it a transier patch and I'll use it for the transier patch. Next up, water bottles. Now, this is the canvas version of the, uh, of the water bottles. As I said before, we don't need to have a pouch for a water bottle, but I'll say at least one. The one that you, you would have like a nesting cup in it. So let's just say this one. So you, you've got your water bottle and obviously you can have this in the fire as well and this will get sooted up. And then you'd have a titanium or a pathfinder cup. Now this will go on, it's like a Trangia. A Trangia will really sort your kit up. You know, that, it really sort of gives it all that like soot on it. Um, and on the fire, it's got a lid in there as well. And that, you know, so that's that's the purpose of that, to keep it, keep your pack clean and keep yourself clean as well, because you will get really sooted up. And soot is one of them hard things to get out of your clothing. You know, it don't come out that easy. Um, and yet again, another thing is that, you know, the, the webbing on there is designed so you can put a carabiner on it, chuck it on your belt, walk around, and if you need to get your water out, just grab it and get your water and put it back in again. So there's a reason, they're lightweight again, um, and simple design, really. I found over the years of, uh, before even making the modular system, that trying to create, buying different pouches to make a system never worked. There's just, they were just too complicated, there's too much on them. Um, and it just, even just getting stuff in and out, you know, these are slick, they're designed to slide in and out really easily. All these are designed so that they don't get caught up. Um, and you know the reason why this has been created because I needed that I needed that in my life and it's, it's done it you know um, let's go through a bit more so this is a, a little product I'm just mucking around with um, previously I've got this uh, a kettle a new kettle I'm a bit of a kettle freak I do like <laughs> a kettle right <laughs> so that's a small little one litre kettle and you can even see it now I've only used that a few times it's pretty sooted up if you ever look inside there you can see the soot already built up in there and um, so yeah and this is a with this canvas material you can do certain things that you can't do with the nylon which is like create like a, just a simple drawstring to, to hold that in place so billy can similar principle uh, with the uh, with the nylon one where it's got the uh, the Velcro, and you can see yet yeah, again, look how sooted up it is in there, you know. Um, but yeah, you can, this is designed for the 12 centimetre, but this has got something else in there. It's got a, a Keith titanium kit in there with a, with, a, with a little bowl. And just Velcro up, and you can really cinch it quite nicely. And make it a nice complete package. We've got a tarp. Now this is one of our uh, canvas um, tarps. This is 2.4 by 2.4, which I think is a reasonable size and weight that's doable to take into the woods. If you start going three by three, it gets a little bit too heavy. But 2.4 by 2.4 is quite doable. Um, and it folds up, being canvas, it folds up really nicely. Um, and it's just nice having that sort of canvas weight, you know, above you. It just gives you that, I don't know, it just feels nice and secure and, you know. But yeah, that's the top. Um, what else we got in here? Right. Yeah, again, another sort of, this is on a, a take on the food bag, the roll top food bag just been cut down uh, and put drawstring on it and yet again I've designed it so when you put it down you can just grab what you want out of it very simple closure just pull it up um, square base on it and this is actually really good size for you know you've got the military ration packs they fit in there lovely in there Now 
another small box. With the modular system, I always try and say, do things in pairs. So if you can do a X small box, get two X small boxes. If you're going to do the zip pouches, as a, get two, and they, and they fit together really nicely. Um, obviously, the roll top bags and stuff, not that, but you know, like the long large pouch, all that. Get pairs because they fit together. They're designed to fit together. This is just a pouch. It's got my um, salt and pepper, a um, bit of oil in there, um, spices you know, for cooking. So it's like a sort of cooking pouch. In here. This is the medium uh, box pouch. And I normally put hat, gloves, scarves in there. Um, but you can say you put your one in it, but that's what I've got in there. Just like some gloves, work gloves, hat, neck scarf. You know, we're talking, you know, it's, it's getting to winter now and it's, uh, it's nice to have them things on you because, you know, weather, UK weather changes so much, doesn't it, in one day. Um, and that's the main bucket. And you, as you can see, We've got quite a lot in there using the modular system and even the two water bottle patches as well. So it's actually, you know, astonishing what you can get. Because it's quite deceiving, right? Yeah. You look at the size of the pack, you think, what are you going to get in there? And there's another feature of the pack, which is really quite unusual, is in the bottom, like a larger, you know, uh, backpacking rucksack will have a, lot of, a bit for your sleeping bag. This has a, a similar sort of thing. So in there I've got a, a Fairwave and a granite shirt. And a frying pan. As <laughs> <laughs> I get a can of frying pan. It's like a QVC advert, and that's not all. <laughs> and, and, and this is the Swedish um, frying pan. I've had this one for years. Oh, the um, Murica? No, it's the... Um, the uh, Stavalon Var, well, it's called, I can't remember the name, it's something like that, <laughs> Stavalon. But yet again, that principle we're saying with the cut with the plate goes over the top of that perfectly to make a lid, you see. Oh, interested. I've not seen that frying pan before. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, like the, the, the cacao was made by the same people. How, how sorry, he's actually got this in stock now, so he, he does um, supply this stuff. And this is the, the bag that I make for it, so this is on my shop, and this is the uh, canvas bag. Drawstring again, got a nice handle on it, and yep, stops it all from sooting up. And, uh, and that will fit a lot of, obviously, another, a lot of yeah. uh, standard frying pans. And well, yeah, so I make it in the, so I call this one the Swedish uh, frying pan pouch, because the Swedish size is slightly smaller than, say, your Pathfinder or your GSI. So I'll do a 20 centimetre frying pan pouch. And I've also got up there, um, which is the large version, which I'll just show you. I'll just grab it. And while David's doing that, I'll just do a pan around. So yeah, it's quite deceiving how much kit you can get in there. So there's like two versions. So this is the large version, which I think is a 28 centimetre version. And, uh, So you can see the difference. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, that you know, they're good pants, you know. But like anything, you know, they. I think you sort of you buy it once, and you know, you know it's going to last forever. You know, they're not cheap, but then you're buying something that is, you know, it's going to last a long, long time. So which one are you going to be making me lunch on? It's going to be that one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so basically um, that is the, uh, that sort of, this is a work, you know, on the shop I can do any of the products that I make in the, in the uh, canvas material. Um, but I'm trying to create some new products just, just for the canvas. Um, so these sort of things here work really nice, you know, even just something like that. Um, just sort of more a simple, um, sort of more traditional looking style uh, pouches to go with the canvas material. Um, so they will be popping up, but the rest of the, uh, the rest of the uh, modular system I can do. And, and people would say, it's funny because I've had people who buy the nylon stuff and they go, Oh, now you've got canvas. I've got to buy a whole range in canvas. And the people have done it, which has been great. Um, these I've not got on the shop yet, but I will have the, um, 
I did have them in, in the mesh material, but I couldn't source the mesh material anymore. But I'm going to make them in the nylon and the, uh, and the canvas as well. But the one thing I can attest to, knowing you for quite some time, is you are constantly going out, testing equipment, and doing a lot, a lot of R&D. Yeah, definitely. And it is, it's not hard work for me because I enjoy doing it. You know, I mean, I enjoy going out and I enjoy creating stuff and testing it and making sure it works. If it don't work for me, um, and it's saying, then I can alter it and change it to the way I think it's going to work. You know, and uh, yeah, so it's all part. To me, I'm quite lucky that I can enjoy and do that as well as developing, you know, and making the stuff at the same time. So I think last it will just be a case of let's see how kind of things slot back into the bag. Yeah, yeah. How it kind of gets organised. Okay, let's move that to one side. So with the granite shirt, I just sort of, it was just a question of just sort of ramming it in there, and then and you think, oh, it ain't going to fit, but surprisingly, and yet again with um, Frost River stuff, um, I've had a lot of Frost River packs over the years. And they have these really good chunky zips. And they just give that a good bash down. So let's put the tarp in. Goes in nicely. Food bag. Let's get this. Uh, this is the uh, medium box pouch. It's got the hat and glove, so that can go down the bottom there quite easily. Um, I'll just give you a little example. You see there in there, there is a little slot just there. It's, right, the water box pouch will fit perfectly. You can feel that spot there. If you look back in there now, sitting in there, lovely. Now I'm not saying this is the way that everyone's going to do it. You, you wait, make your own way. And uh, but it, it does take a little bit of mucking around, especially with a pack which is a bit of an unusual size. On the sort of normal Bergen, it works quite easily, you know, the large box, then the two long large ones, and you just build up from there. So, Billy Can, we've got our And all the pouches are designed, not slightly oversized, I'd say, um, because there's nothing worse than trying to ram something in. You know, and it, it ain't, it's not, you've got to really squeeze it in there. And when you're trying to pack up, when you're after a weekend away, it's one of the worst things to do is trying to ram everything in because you're not going to put it in properly. So we're building it up slowly, it's getting there. It's all fitting in place. And uh, let's chuck that there. Let's chuck that there. And then you can just cinch this up. There is a little zip pocket up the top there. But Obviously you don't need to have you know, a pouch for everything, you know, but if you've got a number of items like this is, and you want to keep them in one spot and not get lost, because if, like me, the reason why I like having bags and pouches because I put stuff down all the time and I forget where it is. And this just gives me those that it's in there and it stays in there. I use it, if, once I finish with using it, it goes back into that bag. I should have put that in the main compartment, but it fits in there fine. There we go, really simple, just slide that down now. And then the X go in there as well. And I always find that um, when you get a new pack, um, it does take a little bit of time to, to work out the best way to use it. 
um, the people I think give up too early when it comes to packs. Oh no, that don't work, so I'm not going to use it. I, I have this mindset that you know it takes. You've got to get used to a pack. What works well with it, even just the adjustment of wearing it. You know, there's a, there's a you know there's a learning curve really for anything. Um, apart from that, what goes on the side? That's it done, and it's quite a neat sort of package. Not too big. Um, and the modular system just shows you how much you can get inside there. Last but not least, could you put the pack on? Just yeah, to see how it rides that. on your yeah, back yeah. and whatnot. <laughs> it's quite a thin, as you can see, quite a long but thin pack. But very comfortable. No, that looks really, really nice. Dave? We really do appreciate you taking the time to show us through your pack and as well as your modular system. So guys, just to wrap up, what we'll do is I'm going to put links down below to David Fryer's website where you can find out a lot more about the pouches, you see close-up pictures, etc. On top of that, I'll put a link below to David's Instagram. He's very active. You can see the plethora of things that he gets up to. And on top of that, I'll also put a link to David's YouTube channel. He does put out videos as well of all his kind of visits, excursions and whatnot. Um, and Dave, lastly, if people do have any questions about your pouches and kind of the systems maybe they like to incorporate or anything the likes thereof, would it be okay for people to reach out to you yeah, and message just, you? Definitely, just like I have a Google David Fryers, it, it, there'll be links to maybe the Etsy store, the website, Instagram, you can send me a DM. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of ways you can contact me. I'll even put in a, uh, an email address. So um, yeah, if there's any questions, just send me an email. Awesome. David, once again, I really do appreciate you allowing me to come down and document your pouch system as well as the pack itself. No, excellent. Thank you, mate. So there you have it my friends, that is a wrap for this video, really do appreciate you watching all the way through. As mentioned just a moment ago, I will put a link below to David Fry's website, his Instagram and his YouTube channel. Highly recommend you go check him out. If you have any questions or queries, Instagram and his website are a fantastic place to message him directly. And also as mentioned at the beginning of this video, this forms part of a broader series I've been filming with David Fry's previous uh, occasions, as well as today on my visit down to see him in this woodland near Canada. Cambridge. So what I'll do is I'll put links to all those videos down below. Once again, I highly recommend you go check those out and I really do appreciate you watching. I shall see you on the next instalment and as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. For myself, Zalatos and David Fryers, peace out.